Over the past two years, since my mother's passing, I've had the opportunity to begin to go through her things. And those of you who have lost a loved one know how that is. And one of the things that I went through was her jewelry. And I found, I found this. And these are pearls. And being a man, of course, I really am not going to be wearing these anytime soon. <laughs> but uh, they remind me of her. And I was looking at them recently, and I was thinking, what are pearls anyway? Where do they come from? So I did a little research, and I discovered that each one of these pearls is a result of a pain. Each one of these pearls is a result of a hurt. Each one of these pearls is a result of a suffering. Pearls, of course, are, are very highly prized. They are uh, come in various shapes and sizes, and some of them are natural, and some of them are cultured, and some of them are fake, and some of them are real. They come in various shapes and sizes, but they're iridescent. They're beautiful. They shimmer. But the result is the same. The, the animal, sea animal, who's living on the bottom of the sea, going about its business, suddenly has an irritation. A piece of sand gets inside, the clam or the mollusk or the oyster, or a bacteria maybe, or a foreign object, and it hurts. It's a pain. And so what the animal does is it secretes some kind of a calcium deposit that surrounds the irritant. And that way it can be safe from harm and go on living. But what remains is a pearl. Pearls come from an irritation. Something beautiful comes from a hurt. Now I ask you to keep that in mind as we discuss our readings from this weekend. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul, and we hear Paul speaking a little bit about himself. And we have to understand where Paul was and then where he had moved to, how he had traveled, if you will, in the spiritual life when he wrote this letter. In the beginning of his life, he was a very zealous, self-righteous Pharisee. And he knew the law very well, and he had gone to all the right schools. He was a Roman citizen. He had rights. He had privileges. He was pretty hot stuff. And he spent his time going around in the early church persecuting the early Christians, hauling them off to jail. We see a picture of St. Paul right up here. If you look in the main aisle of our cathedral, the first mural on this side is the stoning of St. Stephen. And in the upper left-hand corner, there is a figure in the shadows. And that's probably St. Paul. Because we know from scripture that St. Paul condoned that killing. He was present at the stoning of St. Stephen. He might have even thrown a few stones himself. He was so righteous, self-righteous, filled with himself and indignation, he persecuted the early church. And then one day on the road to Damascus, a bright light shone, and he was thrown to the ground. And this story is told many, many times in the scriptures. He was thrown to the ground, and he heard a voice who said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And it was the Lord. And Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? In other words, why are you persecuting my church? And Paul went off to become a great evangelist. He had a huge conversion at that moment. He did a 180 degree turn. He studied, he prayed, and then he went out. He became a great missionary, the greatest missionary the church has ever known. But it all started for Paul with a hurt, with a pain, with an irritation. He had persecuted Jesus in his church for years and years and years. And he felt the regret from that. 
But Paul knew that he couldn't go back. He could only go forward. He says in our second reading, I am who I am by the grace of God. And Paul went on to live a very, very holy life. And today, of course, he's in heaven with the Lord. We all have regrets in life. We all have hurts, we all have irritations, we all have things that we're struggling with now or that we perhaps struggled with many years ago. Difficulties, hurts, pains, regrets, sufferings. And you know and I know that going through life, there's only the play button. We can't fast forward. We can't rewind. We can't press pause. Life is not a DVD. There's only play until the good Lord presses stop. So we think about our life and we say, if only I had known then what I know now. If only that had not happened to me. That sin, that struggle, that illness, that broken relationship, that addiction, that poor choice, that scandal. And sometimes we feel that we're not worthy. But yet, like St. Paul said in the second reading, we ought to say ourselves, I am who I am by the grace of God. Here I am now. That was in the past. Now I look forward to the future. You know, the readings speak about a feeling of unworthiness. That's the theme. First reading from Isaiah Isaiah says, after he witnesses the presence of God, he says, woe is me, I am doomed. I'm not worthy. Second reading, Paul says in another place, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. I'm not worthy of the name. And Peter says in our gospel, depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. All of them feel so unworthy. And sometimes we do too. How many young couples have said to me in private, individually, before they get married, the husband says to me, I'm really not worthy of her. And sometimes a woman says to me privately, I'm really not worthy of him. How many of us in the religious life have said, I'm not worthy to be in front of the people, speaking up to, about the Lord to you, I know I'm not. How many of us have felt as we're raising children or doing our jobs or reaching out to the poor or helping those in need? I'm not worthy. Does God know what I did? Does he know who I am? Why has he chosen me? But again and again, we are who we are by the grace of God. We are who we are by the grace of God. You know, sometimes the uh, the devil likes to play games with us. When we're tempted to sin, when we're tempted to do wrong or evil, it appears, it appears that God is the enemy. He doesn't want us to have any friends, doesn't want us to have any fun, is constricting all those laws, all those teachings of the church. I don't want to do it. I want to be my own person. When we're tempted to sin, Sometimes it appears that God is against us and the evil one who says to us, go ahead, you deserve it. Everyone's doing it. You'll be happy. No one will know. You deserve it. My friends, anytime we hear the phrase, you deserve it, watch out. Thin ice. We don't deserve anything. It's all God's grace. All of it. All of it. And then when we fall, as you and I do, then the reality shows itself. The devil says to us, you're no good. You fell. You did it. All is lost. You're not lovable. You're not forgivable. You might as well just keep on going and sinning. Might as well. God can't possibly forgive you. And then the Lord reveals himself in the truest form. And Jesus says to us, in truth, I love you, come back to me. I will always welcome you back. 
try it again, I forgive you. So that's the drama. But in the midst of this, sometimes we can feel so unworthy and we wonder how God possibly could choose us for anything. We have regrets. And yet the good news is this, that as we go through life, we are who we are by the grace of God. If we allow the Lord into our lives and we repent of what we've done, the Lord is going to welcome us back no matter what. Yes, we have to repent. Yes, we have to say we're sorry. But he will always give us a second chance, always. And the beautiful thing is this. You look into your life, and I'll look into mine. Isn't it true that the moments in our life that have been the most painful or the most hurtful or the most serious sin or scandal or illness or suffering, the point that was the most difficult, and you know what it is in your life, and I know what it is in mine, it was that moment that brought us to our knees, that led us to pray, that caused us to trust in God and not so much in ourselves, that have brought us to this church this very morning. It's a great irony, but yet it is through those sufferings and hurts and difficulties and illnesses and disappointments that God is creating a pearl in you and in me. Each one of these is a hurt or a suffering. That's how it came. And each one of us, if we let the Lord into our life and let him carry us when we're suffering, we'll make something beautiful of it. And this is our faith. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is what allows us to go on that's why we have this crucifixion scene in front of us. This is our hope. So as St. Paul says, I am who I am by the grace of God. And that's true for you and for me. So we ask the Lord Jesus to hold us and carry us and guide us and to create something beautiful in us, a beautiful pearl on the way to heaven. May God bless you.